Okay. What do we actually have here? We have a robot arm that has um, four axes of articulation. We have this motor that turns this arm, swings it around in roughly a hundred, well, maybe 250 degrees, 200 and 30 degrees. Anyways, it swings roughly that way. And then this arm also has the same amount of travel. So you could theoretically get most of a toroid out of this thing, I think. There might be a small gap in the back behind it that you could not get at, but that's fine because you need to have some, well, actually, huh, you could probably get all the way around there. Um, but then there would be some dimple in terms of the actual outline that you could trace because then this is the maximal radius from the center right here. As you can see, you've got the arms lined up and then that swings all the way around and then it can, same sort of thing happens on the other side symmetrically. So you have this sort of a notch, notch pattern that would um, appear at the back of the, the unit. And then you've got vertical travel here on the order of, oh, what is that? Is that 150 millimeters, maybe 200 millimeters, maybe 150? Anyways, something, something like that. And then what they've got mounted on here is some sort of a pneumatic actuator. So you can see there, there's a, a hose bib right there, and then I think that's where the other hose bib would go. And then that's just um, slides out or back, depending on whether you're pumping or sucking air, I'm guessing. And then this has various different mounting strategies that you could apply to it, it appears. Looks like you can mount things to the end of it. What they've got here is a couple of um, fingers and you're obviously grabbing something with it and then moving it because that's what this robot's designed to do grab things and move them but what am I going to do with it I mean grabbing and moving things is all cool and all but um, I, what I was thinking was if I put a hot end on here this would become a pretty big <laughs> 3d printer <laughs> maybe um that uh, is, if I could get the uh, get this guy up and running. Now, um, there is some damage on some of these, but that might just be cosmetic, so I'll just have to try and pop that off and see if that is cosmetic. There is some uh, heat sensing devices on all of the motors, which I would imagine are for reliability. Or reliability, what did I just say? Yeah, reliability. And, um, yeah, so you can see under here a bit, I don't know, the light's not too great, but there is a gear motor and a couple of idlers, or sorry, a toothed pulley. Can you see that there? No, not at all. Well, trust me. It's pulley, a couple of idlers, and that rotates this. So that's this encoder slash solenoid motor. So um, it's got both a motor and an encoder sending information back. I would imagine that all of these motors are similar. That I'm gathering is the motor for driving the quill up and down. I'm going to call it a quill just for the lack of a better word. <clears throat> And then we have um, a motor in here and a solenoid here driving this axis. So, yeah, um, what we need to do is we need to pop this open and see if we can figure out what sort of voltages are going to be required to drive those servos. Okay, so that's a whole mess of wires in this wiring cable. And it does beg the question, 
is that thing even, is this cable even working? But it, that's not even, that's, that's a big mess of connectors there. Okay. It does not appear, though, that any of these in this cable are current carrying. They look all like signal level wires for various things to me and these look like current carrying conductors more than anything and so I'm um, yeah yeah that's my guess Sadly, the easiest conductor to get at is that big arm there, but I don't want that thing swinging around and smacking me in the head. So I'm probably not going to mess with that one. I would like to try uh, this little guy first because it looks much more friendly. And it even has a uh, wiring diagram. ABZ plus 5. So that's the encoder, but what about the motor itself? I wonder if those conductors are going to the motor. So let's maybe pop that off and see if we can get some more information underneath there. So not too surprisingly, we've got a um, an actuator that's based on a screw, some sort of ball screw. So in here would be your um, the ball race and the screw gets spun. Um, this little mechanism here is to take any uh, misalignment between the motor and the actuator out of the equation so it's um, got some translational motion in allowing um, a misalignment of these two axes to not negatively affect what's going on and we have two things um, for uh, safety purposes we have a limit switch and a um, look, what looks like an optical um, an optical interrupt as well. So the optical interrupt triggers first, and then the limit switch, which would be, I would imagine, a hard um, cut to power. Okay. And then similarly at the bottom we have a limit switch, but no optical. Okay. So, <clears throat> coming up with a wiring diagram for this is going to take some time. But, uh, yeah, and I'm just like 